Jean Valjean, who had been imprisoned for 19 years, was released today. However, the prison warden intentionally made it difficult for him by commanding him to carry the several hundred pound flagpole as a way to complete his final day of sentence. It was an impossible task, but Jean Valjean was naturally strong. He gritted his teeth and steadily moved forward, finally smashing the heavy flagpole in front of the prison warden. Reluctantly, the warden signed the release document, but marked it with a note of extreme danger. Jean Valjean was required to regularly report to the police station, otherwise, he would be arrested and imprisoned again for violating the law. In the eyes of the warden, a criminal would always be a criminal. He warned Jean Valjean to be careful after his release because if he fell into his hands again, he would make sure Jean Valjean suffered more than death. Jean Valjean was deeply angry. He had only stolen a small piece of bread to save his starving nephew, and yet he was sentenced to 19 years in prison. After his release, he didn't experience a rebirth. His identification papers felt like a mark of shame, and everyone scorned him. No employer was willing to hire him. Jean Valjean became an outcast in a world of injustice, where he could be beaten and driven away without consequence. He endured indifference and torment. On a cold, dark night, Jean Valjean curled up to sleep at the entrance of a church. He was rescued by a kind-hearted bishop who not only provided him with food but also allowed him to sleep in a warm bed. However, Jean Valjean no longer trusted anyone, taking advantage of the bishop's deep sleep. Jean Valjean stole all the silverware, but he was quickly apprehended by the police. Surprisingly, the bishop claimed that he had given the silverware to Jean Valjean as a gift and even handed him two candlesticks, saying, you forgot the most valuable items. At this point, the police no longer pursued the matter. The bishop's compassionate act touched Jean Valjean's heart, granting his soul redemption and causing him to let go of his hatred towards the unjust world. He devoutly swore to God to wash away his past and start anew. He tore up his identification papers and obtained a rebirth in a new identity. Eight years passed in the blink of an eye. Under the tyranny of the king, the people lived in poverty, and homeless individuals could be found on every street corner. At this time, Jean Valjean opened a textile factory using the silverware he had acquired. He specifically hired the poor to work there. Due to his acts of kindness, he gained the respect of the people, and they elected him as the mayor. Unfortunately, Javert, who had been promoted to police chief, now had to work under Jean Valjean. During their first encounter, Javert eagerly expressed his loyalty to his new superior. Jean Valjean recognized Javert at a glance, but Javert only felt a sense of familiarity towards Jean Valjean. Suddenly, a loud noise came from outside. A carriage had overturned trapping an elderly person beneath it. In a moment of urgency, Jean Valjean exerted his immense strength to lift the carriage and rescue the person trapped beneath it. This act also triggered Javert's memory of him. However, without concrete evidence, Javert dared not hastily report the mayor. In Jean Valjean's factory, there was a female worker named Fantine. She faced harassment from the overseer due to her striking appearance, and other female workers, driven by jealousy, ostracized her. In her earlier years, Fantine had become pregnant out of wedlock and gave birth to her daughter, Cosette. However, her boyfriend cruelly abandoned her. In order to make a living, she had no choice but to entrust her daughter to an innkeeping couple and pay a hefty monthly fee for her upbringing. In 19th century France, people held conservative and feudalistic beliefs, and a woman's chastity was considered more important than life itself. A colleague exposed Fantine's unwed pregnancy to everyone, the overseer who had been unsuccessful in his attempts to seduce Fantine, held a grudge against her. Without informing Jean Valjean, he forcibly expelled her from the factory, to pay for her daughter's upbringing. Fantine, who had once been virtuous, first sold her long hair and then her two tidy front teeth. Bald and toothless, she had no choice but to succumb to desperation and became a street prostitute, living a wretched and miserable life. Every night, she endured torment and unbearable pain, but for the sake of her daughter who was being cared for by strangers in a distant place. This great mother gradually accepted everything, but when a client harassed her and stuffed snow into her clothes, she became enraged. She lunged at the client and scratched his face. The shameless client called the patrol officer Javert and falsely accused Fantine of harassing him and injuring himself. Upon seeing the wound, Javert deemed the evidence conclusive. Fantine pleaded in agony, begging Javert to spare her, considering her helpless situation with her starving daughter. However, the heartless Javert insisted on pursuing the case. With a single glance, he recognized Fantine as the former worker from his factory. He inquired about the reason. Perplexed, Fantine helplessly explained that it was because the overseer had dismissed her that she ended up in this situation. Jean Valjean, feeling deeply ashamed, listened and then firmly lifted Fantine in his arms. He made a resolute promise in the name of God that he would take full responsibility for this matter. Ignoring Javert's obstruction, Jean Valjean insisted on taking Fantine to the hospital. A few days later, 
Javert received a reply letter from the Paris headquarters. It turned out that after their first meeting, he had become suspicious of the mayor and had written a denunciation letter to the headquarters. The reply letter stated that the fugitive criminal Jean Valjean had been captured. This news filled Javert with remorse for doubting the mayor. He voluntarily went to the mayor's office to confess his mistake. Upon hearing this, Jean Valjean did not blame him but asked him to focus on his work. However, after Javert left, Jean Valjean was plagued by agonizing choices. If he remained silent, he would continue to be respected as the mayor and the prosperous owner of the factory. But an innocent person, simply because of their similar appearance, would face imprisonment. While Jean Valjean was torn and unable to decide, he saw the candlestick given to him by the bishop and suddenly had an epiphany. He realized that hope, like the flame of a candle, needs to be passed on from one person to another. If he didn't stand up, that hope would eventually be extinguished. Without hesitation, Jean Valjean rushed to the court and confessed everything before the judge, proving the innocence of the person by his side. After speaking, he hastily left the courtroom. He returned to the hospital, intending to fulfill his final task before going to prison. However, at this moment, Fantine was already on the brink of death. She entrusted her daughter, Cosette, to Jean Valjean. After receiving Jean Valjean's solemn promise, Fantine peacefully departed from this tragic world. Just then, Javert also arrived at the hospital, intending to arrest Jean Valjean and clear his own tarnished record accumulated over the years. Jean Valjean pleaded with Javert to give him three days to arrange for Fantine's daughter. However, Javert believed it was just an excuse for Jean Valjean to escape. With no other options, Jean Valjean had to jump into the river from the window to flee. Meanwhile, Cosette, who was being fostered by the innkeeper, had never experienced any warmth or happiness. She not only had to do laborious work every day but was also made to fetch water alone in the woods wearing only thin clothing on winter nights. Jean Valjean's appearance brought a ray of light to Cosette's miserable childhood. He spent a whole 1500 francs to redeem Cosette from the innkeeper's clutches and promised her that he would take care of her from now on, that she was his daughter, and he was her father. Just as the father and daughter left, Javert arrived at the inn but found it empty. Frustrated, he set up checkpoints at the city gates, inspecting passing vehicles. Jean Valjean, with Cosette, abandoned their carriage to evade the search but was spotted by Javert, who was riding a tall horse and chasing them with urgency. Driven to a dead end, Jean Valjean had no choice but to take Cosette and jump into a church. Fortunately, he encountered the old man whom he had once saved daringly from under a carriage. From then on, with the old man's help, Jean Valjean and Cosette hid in the church, beginning a life of anonymity. Javert, once again unsuccessful in his pursuit, stood on the city wall and vowed to the entire city that he would bring the cunning Jean Valjean to justice, upholding order and justice in the city. Time passed, and nine years went by. France approached the eve of the Great Revolution as people awakened amidst hunger, aiming to overthrow monarchy and establish a democratic republic. Marius, a noble young man, was also a member of the uprising. He was upright and passionate, with lofty ideals and beliefs in his heart. One day, he encountered Cosette on the street while she was accompanying Jean Valjean in aiding the poor. The angelic beauty and kindness of Cosette instantly captured Marius' heart. At the same time, the innkeeper, who had fallen into destitution, recognized Jean Valjean and attempted to extort more money from him. Amidst the chaos, the public servant Javert appeared, afraid of being recognized. Jean Valjean dared not stay and took Cosette with him while Javert was distracted. Back at home, Cosette, who also had feelings for Marius, was puzzled by the secrets her father seemed to be hiding all these years. No matter how much she asked, Jean Valjean refused to reveal anything. On the eve of the revolution, Marius finally learned from Apennine the whereabouts of Cosette. Fearing for their uncertain fate after the next day, he decided to meet the person he longed for in his heart. On the other hand, Cosette, who was also tormented by lovesickness, happened to see Marius approaching like moonlight. Their eyes met, and time seemed to stand still. They opened their hearts to each other, exchanging their feelings. However, Jean Valjean suddenly heard a commotion outside the door. He immediately called his daughter back. As it turned out, Eponine's parents had become Javert's informants. They secretly followed Eponine and discovered the hiding place of the father and daughter. Helpless, Jean Valjean had no choice but to take Cosette and flee to the ends of the earth once again. Before leaving, Cosette left her address for Marius at the doorstep, but it was taken by Eponine, who had secretly loved Marius for years. Years of unrequited love made Eponine unable to magnanimously fulfill the desires of the two lovers at this moment. Marius was deeply saddened by Cosette's sudden departure but decided not to follow in her footsteps. Instead, he chose to stay and fight alongside his revolutionary allies. The next day, as the sun rose, Marius and his comrades marched through the streets in a demonstration. They held high the banner of democracy and shouted for freedom. People were inspired and joined them in the protest. 
The military and the police quickly arrived to suppress the uprising. In the constant clashes between the two sides, the conflict escalated. Although the rebels had the support of the people, their weapons were no match for the army. They were forced to retreat into the neighborhoods. As night fell, the king dispatched his most elite troops, rendering the uprising defenseless against their might. In the midst of the conflict, Apennine, in an attempt to save Marius, took a bullet for him. Just as the defensive line was about to be breached, Marius ignited a torch with a barrel of explosives, forcing the army to retreat in a self-sacrificial act. In her final moments, she produced Cosette's letter and exchanged it with Marius, hoping for his happiness. Overwhelmed with sadness, Marius, in a state of despair, wrote a heartfelt letter as his last testament, entrusting it to someone to deliver to Cosette. However, the letter ultimately fell into the hands of Jean Valjean. The letter was filled with expressions of love for Cosette, but Marius still chose to dedicate himself to the revolution. He urged Cosette to forget about him. After reading the letter, Jean Valjean understood that Marius was engaged in a dangerous and noble cause. Jean Valjean decided to risk it all to save Marius, disguising himself as a soldier. Jean Valjean deceived the army and successfully infiltrated the ranks of the rebel there, he witnessed Javert being captured by the revolutionaries, who suspected him of being a spy. Jean Valjean requested to personally handle Javert, taking him to a back alley. Jean Valjean cut the ropes binding Javert, leaving him astonished. However, Javert did not show gratitude. He warned Jean Valjean that even if he spared him today, he would still bring him to justice in the future. Nevertheless, Jean Valjean calmly stated that it was Javert's duty, and he wouldn't hold it against him. Javert looked at Jean Valjean in silence for a long time. For the first time, his unwavering beliefs started to waver. The dawn broke, and the military launched a final assault. Under the siege of artillery fire, the defense line of the rebels was easily penetrated, and their allies fell in heroic sacrifice. Marius, too, was shot and gravely wounded. Jean Valjean risked his life to drag him into the sewers, narrowly escaping death. After the battle, Javert and his men cleared the battlefield. As he gazed upon the young lives scattered on the ground, he was deeply moved. He removed the medallion from his chest and placed him on the body of a child, hoping that this would put this innocent little life to rest. Javert did not discover Jean Valjean's body. Hearing the sounds from the sewer, he surmised that Jean Valjean had escaped through the sewer. So he positioned himself at the city's sewage outlet, waiting for his prey. As expected, he eventually encountered a dirt-covered Jean Valjean. Jean Valjean knew that Javert would surely try to apprehend him, but Marius's life was hanging by a thread. Jean Valjean steps forward against Javert's gun. However, Javert never pulled the trigger. His unwavering commitment to justice had been betrayed. Javert had always believed Jean Valjean to be a criminal. Yet he consistently acted in the service of justice. He began to question the supreme law that he had upheld so faithfully. He had to admit that there was something higher than the law in this world forgiveness and love. Ultimately, Javert's faith crumbled, and he jumped from the high bridge, ending his life of inner conflict. A few days later, Marius finally regained consciousness. He returned to the place where he had fought alongside his allies, consumed by sorrow, as the sole survivor. Marius felt his life had no purpose. Cosette, however, soothed the wounds inflicted by war with her love. After enduring the baptism of bloodshed, the two of them finally gained Jean Valjean's approval. But on the day before their wedding, Jean Valjean confessed his fugitive past to Marius, shocked by the revelation. Marius's attitude toward Jean Valjean turned cold. Jean Valjean feared that his past as a fugitive would burden Cosette in the future, so he left without saying goodbye. Soon after, Marius and Cosette held their wedding. Unaware that the innkeeper had appeared at the ceremony, seeking to extort money from Marius, the innkeeper unintentionally revealed that it was Jean Valjean who had saved him when he was unconscious. Marius felt profound shame. He was ashamed that the world had blinded him with its materialism and that his ignorance had clouded his heart. Ignoring the guests at the wedding, he took Cosette and went to find Jean Valjean. Jean Valjean, weakened and worn, still held Cosette in his thoughts, hoping for her happiness in a complete and loving family. In a daze, he heard a familiar voice calling him father. It was Cosette and Marius, who had arrived at the church. They tightly grasped Jean Valjean's hand, expressing their remorse for their previous judgment. As a father, Jean Valjean only wanted their happiness. In his final moments, he entrusted his last letter of repentance to Cosette. With no more attachments, he saw Fantine coming to take him. With his soul elevated and his body at rest, Jean Valjean peacefully closed his eyes, accompanied by his loved ones. Looking back on Jean Valjean's life, he was constantly struggling between good and evil, but he consistently chose the former, using his conscience to cleanse his soul from its stains and finding redemption. I'm a film lover, so feel free to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.